All right, Daring Faith Devotional Day 2. Uh, today is titled, Faith Comes from Hearing God's Word. Uh, verse, the very first verse that they uh, quote, well, first off, we'll rewind. We're doing Daring Faith by Rick Warren. Uh, basically, I'm stepping out by doing this 517 Fitness thing full time. Daring Faith uh, pretty much spoke to me via that. So that's why we're doing Daring Faith. Uh, but yeah, if you want to pick up this book, uh, do the devotional with me. Link is down below. Uh, it is an affiliate link, so I do get a little kickback. But you don't pay any more than you normally would pay. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, day two, faith comes from hearing God's word. Uh, there's two verses that stick out in this little devotional today, so I'm going to read those off to you. First one is, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay, so faith comes from hearing. I think a lot of people, well here, we could vent for a couple minutes on this. A lot of people in today's society claim to be Christians and their actions don't match up to it because they're not hearing the Word of God, which every week I point down over here to my Bible, which is on the floor because I put it there when I'm doing this because it's normally over here. Uh, but they don't actually read the Bible. They listen to other people talk about the Bible. Uh, which is a very interesting concept because more often than not, I'll have conversations with people and they'll spit out, spit out, that's kind of mean. They'll, they'll say something and I'll just go, where in the Bible does it say that? Uh, and they will kind of mumble some stuff and say, oh, over there. And then when you go back and look for it, it's like, no, that's not what they're talking about. Or they take that one sentence and do it. I, I'll be the first to say I have done that in my life. Um, I'm sure that there's going to be come times at 517 Fitness um, that I quote scripture. Maybe it's out of context or out of for humor's sake, I'll say something. Um, but that's uh, a part of this that I, I personally want to make sure I don't do. And if I do do it, please call me out on it. Um, but yeah, I want to read the Bible and take those words, those sentences, and correlate it into real life, where sadly people take what other people say, it's kind of a, th it's like the telephone game. One person reads the Bible, maybe takes it out of context, then spreads that message to this person, who then takes that message and spreads it to that person. So then down the line, we've got all these people thinking X, Y, and Z is okay, when really it's probably not. Uh, and when you go back into the Bible, it, it, it blatantly isn't uh, something that God would want for us. Um, so yeah, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I would say read your Bible every day is what that's really hinting at. Uh, the second verse uh, that they, no, that was Romans 10, 17. Uh, the second verse that really steps out in this whole devotion that they, that Rick, uh, Rick, like he's my buddy, uh, Rick plans out is uh, from James 1. It is 19b through 21. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is with prevalence and okay let's reread that sentence therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you so four things really step out and he lists them here from that verse uh is you must be quiet um more often than not at least in my life the events that get the most out of hands are the ones that I jump into too fast. I don't let that person talk. Um, I'm sure you've had those experiences where somebody's telling you something and instead of being quiet and actually listening to them, um, you go right after that first sentence. And more often than not, like I I've been in those conversations where I've been like, hey, I think you're being a jerk. 
and I'll go through it and then I'll end it with, but in the big scheme of things, it's not that big of a deal. But people have already heard that first sentence and they're so quick to jump on that that they then go into this anger and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I, th I know personally I need to be, be quiet more and listen and actually listen. Uh, more often than not, I will listen for my response. For, okay, I'll hear that one sentence and then try and respond. But I know I need to be quiet and listen to the whole context of what somebody is saying before jumping in and saying what I need to say. Um, you must be calm. I think that goes right back into the being quiet. So when, when you have, I can think of a handful of times where I, I do get a little feisty, a little passionate, you might say. Uh, my wife will chuckle if she ever watches this. Uh, it, it's, I have a very small BS meter. Uh, where people, I'll start listening to people and they start rabbit trailing and start talking about stuff. And I'm probably doing that right now. Uh, that's probably why I dislike it. Um, but I, I do know that I need to stay calm in those events and let, it, more often than not, if you stay calm, I just kicked the thing, I'm sorry about that, uh, the tripod. If you stay calm in a situation, this... Arguments and conversations aren't meant to be one, but the person that tends to stay the calmest tends to win or get their point across better, uh, especially if it is in a group setting. Um, I have found that when somebody gets really passionate and starts yelling and getting angry about something, there is a way to drive that and get people behind you and stuff. But the person that tends to be more calm, collective, and subtle through their message uh, tends to come out the, the best in those situations. Uh, you must be clean. This, this goes back to kind of the nutrition stuff, but also just the mind. What you put into your body is what you're going to get out of your body. So if you're eating Big Macs all day long, garbage, you're not going to be able to run a mile. You're not going to be able to climb up those stairs. You're not going to be able to do the things that you want to do. The same with if you're putting that filth in your mind, you're going to get those negative content, that negative content in your mind telling you things that you can and can't do. Um, you know, the, the mind is a very funny thing. So the more garbage you put into it, the more likely you are to not succeed. A good point, and that's kind of a really general sense, but a good concept to do it is like, Tom Brady just won the Super Bowl. I, I really have no football. I, I live in the San Francisco area, so I guess I would say I'm a San Francisco 49ers fan. But they're awful right now, but that's a whole other point. I'm, I'm not the biggest football fan, so um, take it or leave it. But Tom Brady just won the Super Bowl with the Patriots. Do you think Tom Brady... I'm trying to think of something. Um knows who the real housewives are on Bravo or knows what Pretty Little Liars is or has watched the latest Arrow episode or those types of things. All those, I'm not, I'm not condemning those things, but what you put into your mind takes away from what other things you can put into your body. Um, so if you, going back to the nutrition, I'm jumping back and forth between the mind and the body, but let's say you knock out a tray of brownies that's delicious but you could have ate the salad and chicken first and only had one brownie and been better off you know it's the put first things first um, the better things should come out first and then the pleasure stuff should be the last thing you add that's why dessert is tends to be the last part of a meal uh, that's why you should watch or at, you know, you shouldn't just start your day knocking out six hours of television. There's probably some other things you need to do. Uh, that's why I like to start my day with reading the Bible and then um, praying. And then I do read some sort of self-help or nonfiction book to help me better myself. Um, but yeah, the, the must be clean. I would, I would say that that is where, what I would focus on is putting the first things first. Uh, which I do believe is a biblical thing, but don't quote me on that. Um, 
And the fourth thing they, uh, he talks about is you must be humble. Humble is one of those words that I think is thrown out there a whole lot and nobody really knows what it means. Um, the part of the verse is humbly accept the word planted in you. Uh, I'm just going to read the par- little two sentences that are underneath it. Be ready to do whatever God tells you from his word. A prideful attitude makes the heart hard. Um, humble. I, I, I couldn't describe it to you. Um, I know that God and Jesus were humble. Um, I would, the way that that sentence is said, I would maybe look at it in the realm of it is not prideful. Putting yourself first. But yeah, if you if you know, I'm gonna put the definition in the description because now that's gonna bug me. Um, so go ahead and open up the description right now. And, uh, the Webster Dictionary version of humble will be there. But yeah, that that's something that is throughout the Bible is that we need to be humble. And through my years of being a Christian, has always confused me on what the actual definition of that is. Um, so that will probably be a video I make sooner than later is what is being humble or how to be humble or something like that. So look forward to that video. Uh, so let's go over the three uh, questions they ask at the end of every single one of these. What did you hear? The thing that I personally heard the most in reading these two verses is to stay calm. Um, I do tend to get a little antsy, a little ADD, you might say. Um, Stay calm, stay quiet. um, Be consistent uh, in that, too. Um, That's probably the thing that stands out the most in these verses. Uh, How does this apply to your life? I'm dealing a lot more with people that I don't know in doing this 517 uh, channel. I want to come across as godly and the best version of myself as I can to those people. And that's something that you could pray for me for um, in those events. But yeah, I I need to be quiet and listen to people. Um, I tend to get one-sided and see what's the best for me instead of seeing that two-way street. Uh, What will you do? Don't just hear the word, be a doer of the word. Um, I didn't talk about it in here, but I kind of came across it within this, is that first things first, is really focusing on doing the productive things first and then doing the fun things later on. Um, Like I'm an Arrow fan. I like watching Arrow and The Flash on the CW. Uh, A huge comic book dork on a side note. Um, That and Disney, but... Disney doesn't have a consistent thing that Disney, but I digress, is putting the things that are most important first in my day. So waking up, read the Bible, pray, work out, read something nonfiction, those four things, um, and then kind of plan my day. But then in plan the day, doing the productive things for 517 Fitness first. So shooting the video content, writing the scripts, doing all of that stuff is the most important thing. Because without the content, I can't talk to you guys. Um, Then going out and using the social media, learning how to do all that stuff and going from there. Um, Even though that stuff tends to be the more exciting things, uh, I I do think uh, that's something I'll take away from this today's uh, devotional is doing the first things first and staying calm within it. So yeah, um, that's day two. Look forward to day three. This is uh, going pretty good. Uh, we'll see how day three goes. But yeah, thank you so much. And uh, if you haven't already, subscribe down below and then uh, we can do this every day. All right. Have a great day. God bless.